Hello, Wiki Tree, and we've got Steve Harris here. How Good morning, doing, Steve. I'm doing How great. Are How are you? Good. Good have a little bit of a different locale here for my videoing this morning. We have a we have somebody coming in to check our AC and I don't didn't want the dogs to interrupt. Everybody's familiar with my dogs, so <laughs> <laughs> So we have a different look for the day. I see Mindy's here. We've got Alesh in here and it's several other visitors from what sounds like all over at least our country. Right. Um and of course, Alesh is, is over in uh, Europe, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, Miss, today, Liz. what's up? Miss Liz. Yes. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about projects, which is really cool because we have a broad range of projects. Um, we're going to cover what a project is, uh, what they do how to join them, and a number of other things that Steve has packaged up for us. So uh, should we get started, Steve? You want to just Absolutely. jump right in? Got Absolutely. anything else you want to share before we get going? Oh, I'm ready to go. Well, let's start out with, can you just tell us what a project is on yeah. Wikitree? So at the most basic level, projects are a group of members who are organized around a specific topic or volunteer activity. Um, the projects make it easier for members who are interested in the same profiles or types of volunteer work to find each other, communicate, and better coordinate their efforts. Great. So we have main projects, which are like umbrellas, I guess. And then we have projects that fall under that. And then we have sub projects and all of that distinguishment. Do you want to kind of define those for us? Right. Um, so we kind of have three types of projects, top level projects, sub projects and free space projects. Um, I actually have a little slide I can share. Nice. All right. Hopefully that's showing up. So the first one are our top level projects. These are really the most formal projects on Wikitree and um, these will have at a minimum, you know, two project leaders, a project account, a project box for managing their profiles. Um, they're also going to have at least five or more active members, usually much, much more than this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a right. project page, which is in the project namespace, a unique tag that members follow, um, and even a unique badge that is issued to members of that project. Um, from there, we have sub projects. They're very similar to top level projects, but they're less formal. So they're usually more focused in their scope at times, breaking down a top level project into kind of like a smaller focus area. Um, they can contain a lot of, or some or even all of the different elements of a top level project, but they're not actually required. Um, mm -hmm. The one exception that we'll really see on sub projects is for member badges. So not all sub projects will have a unique badge for their members. Um, and instead, they're going to rely on the badge of their top level project. So as an example, in the United States project, as an umbrella for all of the individual state projects, um, <clears throat> U.S. Black Heritage, Southern Colonies, they all have their badges. So there's a little bit of exceptions to the rules, um, even though they're considered sub projects of the United States top level. So again, they're, they're a lot less formal. That the badge thing kind of happened because of the evolution of our projects. Isn't that right? Like, like right. some of these were kind of, they had a project or a badge at the beginning, but then we had to do some reorganizing to help things make more sense. Does right. Make, absolutely. Am I right? Um, as, as projects have grown, we kind of have a limited space for the amount of badges that we're able to create an issue, right? You, you, there's always some type of limitation there. Um, and what we're also starting to find is some of the newer projects as they were coming up fit well with another project. So instead of mm -hmm. having two separate projects with different members working on very similar profiles, it's why not everybody coordinate together? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're a member of a sub project, you're in a roundabout way, a member of that top level project as well. Right. Um, especially gotcha. if the sub project is relying on that top level badge. Cool. Okay. Um, the next one and probably 
kind of confusing for a lot of people are free space projects. These are the least formal of all the project types. Um, they're essentially whatever you want them to be. They're easy to start. They're easy to set up. Um, and they could be for really anything. It could be a long-term project that, you know, eventually will gain a lot of traction, a lot of members, or it can even be like one of the one-off projects that has kind of a defined start and end date. Um, and then later on just becomes like a compiled resource page as an example. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there, there's a lot of options with them. Um, <clears throat> So like sub projects, they're not going to have member badges, right? It's going to, mm -hmm. if anybody's badge, it's going to rely on either a sub project or a top level project that it may logically fall under. But they um, might have a sticker. Right. Yeah, there's definitely stickers that we can use for those yeah. as well. Um, and some examples of those free space projects are going to include like one name and one place studies, which fall under the one name and one place studies projects. Uh, cemetery pages, descendant groups, um, DNA research pages, mm -hmm. and even project teams. Cool. Yep. So what happens if somebody starts a free space project and it turns out to go gangbusters and it starts growing and growing? <laughs> oh, actually, Mindy and I had the same question at the same time. <laughs> yes. Can it, can it morph into a more formal project? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a lot of ideas are going to start at the kind of free space level. That's where you can really try to define what your goals are, what your tasks are, what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and then later on, like we said, as the membership grows or interest grows in that project, it's time to kind of move it up the ranks, so to speak. So mm -hmm. um, initially, when a free space project is created, um, it's housed into a new projects category, um, which is something that Aon used to monitor that I'm monitoring now. And as these new free space projects are popping up, I'll kind of reach out to leaders that may have an interest in that topic so they can see okay. about maybe absorbing that into their project as maybe a team sure. or, you know, just a, you know, sub project or something of that nature. Yep. So they can definitely move up the ranks. Now, all the way to top level project, uh, it's possible, maybe not as likely. Um, just because we have a lot of top level projects now, they're 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 pretty formal. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, you know, if if there was a country breakout, for example, um, I think we have an Asia project now. But if we were wanting to do specific countries and we had enough members and leaders to support that, then it could become a top level project. Okay. Cool. Yep. And I hope everybody who's watching right now knows you can ask questions and we'll we'll get to them as we go along here. So feel free to, to chime in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so we've got a ton of different kinds of projects on Wikitree. Can you categorize for us and tell us what types are available right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> the main, this is going to be another confusing part for a lot of people. There's two main divisions of projects or what I call divisions. Um, <clears throat> those are going to be projects which manage profiles, such as geographical mm -hmm. and topical projects, and those who do not manage profiles. Those are going to be functional projects for people who are working on a specific, you know, activity on Wikitree, not necessarily that they're working on um, profiles themselves. Uh, have a little breakdown for that as well. So the first one is geographical projects. Um, these are focused on a specific geographical area or maybe even a specific country. So, for example, we have projects for England, Italy, the United States, right? Everybody's familiar with those. But we also have a few projects like Slavic Roots that cover the share um, countries of Croatia, the Czech Republic, Poland, etc. And all of these projects will be managing profiles at some point within their organization. Next one are topical projects. They're focused on a specific topic or theme. So these are generally more global in nature, not always restricted mm -hmm. to a specific geographical area, although they could be, um, mm -hmm. or they're very highly focused to certain types of profiles, events, or time periods. So right, for example, yeah. some of our top levels, notables, the Mayflower Project, the DNA Project, Magna Carta, Military and War, et cetera. Right. Um, and again, they're all going to be working on managing profiles at some point in time. Okay. 
And then last, certainly not least, are our functional projects. Um, so these are projects that focus on doing a certain type of activity on um, Wikitree rather than focusing on a specific group of people. Okay, so these are members like um, our greeters and rangers, the mentors, mediators, moderators, data doctors, the templates team, you know, things of that nature. They're working kind of behind the scenes, so to speak, to right. make sure that the tree can be the best that it can be. Right. I have a question for you. Okay. So um, we talk about projects managing profiles. So what does that mean? What What does it mean when they manage a profile? Why would they manage a profile? And does it mean that nobody else can work on that profile? No, absolutely not. Okay. So the basic concept is the further that we go back in time, we're going to run into a lot of shared ancestors. You know, these ancestors from pre-1700, pre-1500 could have hundreds or thousands or much more descendants. So there's going to be a lot of interest as people start to build back in their tree. What the project is doing is kind of taking responsibility to help that profile and help all the descendants who may be interested in it. So instead of someone just being able to jump in and make changes for a widely shared ancestor or maybe even one of the famous notables, we have what's called PPP or Project Protected Profiles, where a project can protect it to make sure that it stays as safe as possible. Now, anybody can still contribute to the profiles in a number of ways. They can work directly with the project. They can leave comment mm -hmm. profiles or um, profile comments. Excuse me, got that backwards. Um, so they can collaborate with everybody, make sure they have all of their facts and sources straight before they start jumping in and making changes like removing a parent, right. you know, things of that nature. So um, if somebody wants to work on a managed profile, um, they're actually probably going to be working with the whole project membership because the project yeah, membership absolutely. oversees that, right? Right, absolutely. Um, and so, so that's kind of like having a, a group resource that available to them. Yeah, absolutely. One of the great things about Wikitree and having this collaborative genealogy is that everybody has an expertise in different areas. And when you start to put all of that together, find all these additional resources, ideas and you know knowledge, and that's all shared together, you know, there's some really great things that can come of it. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. look at our tree now and how it's expanding, right? Obviously, that's yeah. all due to these members who are working together, trying to make all the profiles be the best that they possibly can be. Right. Um, and Mindy has a good question. She wants to know what's the best way to reach a project and to collaborate with them or to collaborate on a single profile. There's quite a few different ways. The one that I suggest myself is directly through G to G. So each project is going to have that unique tag, you know, that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And most, if not all the members of the projects are going to be following those tags. So if you're wanting to reach out to the Canada project, for example, you would tag a GDG post with Canada and, you know, that's going to grab their attention. It's going to come in their email feeds. Right. You know, and for those who are just monitoring G to G all day long, looking to help other people, yeah. you know, they're going right. to be able to find those posts and be able to help them out. Right. And of course, you can always go to the project page and find out who the leaders are or um, do we, or, or look at the badge feed for that. Yeah, project. absolutely. So, yeah, there's yeah. there's definitely the badge feeds that we can look at to see who all may be a member. Um, mm -hmm. besides G to G, I would probably say the project page itself. A lot of projects have information about how to contact them. The leaders will be listed. The project coordinators will be listed. Um, there may be teams that specialize in certain areas. And if a profile or a question that you have relates to one of those teams, you can reach out to a team leader or members mm -hmm. of that team to get assistance. So how do the, I, I how do the the members of the project communicate with each other generally besides some of them go through g2g others use some of them use g2g um, a lot of them a lot of projects use google groups so they have um, mm -hmm. a project account set up as an email list where everybody can communicate if anybody sends an email to that group it's filtered out to everyone so they can all communicate back and forth um, it's a great place for leaders and project coordinators to send out information to the group. 
on tasks mm -hmm. that they may need help with, challenges that they're working on for the month, or for members just to ask questions. Um, not all projects, but some projects do have kind of an open Google group where anybody can post to it, whether they're a member or not. Um, that's typically stated on their project page. They'll have a link and you can just email to that Google group and then members can respond to you in that fashion as well. Okay. And then if you, if we wanted to find, a, maybe you're going to get to this later, but um, how would you find a project? If I wanted to go find the Magna Carta project, for example, since I see Liz is out here talking about that, um, where would I go to find it? The, the best page to look for that will be help projects. So that'll give you a listing of all of the main top level projects and in some cases, sub projects. Let me see. I can pull up my screen. I think you want the find menu. Yeah. <laughs> find projects, not help projects, right? Well, the, the page itself is help projects, um, but it's through <laughs> the find the menu. So if you go to okay. find Oh, I got what you're saying. Projects, yeah. yeah, it's a yeah. help page. Yeah. Sorry. Now I'm confusing everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can always get to the project list through the find menu. So. Correct. Through the find menu and it'll just say projects <laughs> and it'll take you to the help page for projects. For projects. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Right. And again, okay. it'll, it'll, it'll break them down into those geographical, topical, functional. So they're kind of easier to find. Okay. Yeah. It's a great list that we have out there. It, it shows, um, you know, project leaders and some of the sub projects that are associated with top levels and pre right. pretty cool. So we, with projects, we have project leaders mm -hmm. and what do they do? What do project leaders do? And are they the only ones that are allowed to lead a project? Absolutely not. That's a good question. This is another one of the topics that, you know, there may be a lot of confusion on what I, when I talk about project leadership, I'm talking about the entire project as a whole, no matter what role you may actually be holding. Um, I can share my screen again. Let me get here. So we'll just kind of start off with, let's say the project leaders. Um, mm -hmm. This is what a lot of people see and think of when we say the term leadership, but this is literally a role that is called project leader. Um, they have kind of special powers and ongoing responsibilities as a role on the Wikitree website. So they're able to do certain things such as add and remove project badges for members, add and remove the PPP status that we talked about for managed profiles. Um, they also help to deliberate on pre-1500 certification requests, um, pre-1700 certification requests as needed. And they're also required to serve as a ranger, a mediator, a moderator, or a mentor. So this helps them kind of give back to the community as well, right? So leader really means that you are helping to lead. So this is another way that they're able to give back outside of their own project. Now within the project scope itself, leaders are primarily responsible for the overall project making sure that there are, you know, defined goals, that there are tasks that can, that will help members to contribute to those goals. Um, you know, and just kind of overall steering the ship, right? Next, we have project coordinators. And project coordinators, no matter the terms used, they actually help lead projects. They just don't have the formal project leader status or role on Wikitree. So they'll have the project coordinator badge. But with that, they also have a couple of options available to them. So they're able to answer questions from those who are interested in the project. They help monitor the project's G to G tag that we talked about earlier. So if you had a question, you reach out to them. These project coordinators are going to be monitoring that, trying to make sure that they help everybody who has questions. Um, they provide information back up to the project leaders as necessary. So making recommendations for improvement, or if a member has an issue or a question, you know, that they can't answer, they filter that back up to the project leaders who have a little more resources available to them. Um, and with the project coordinator badge, they can also edit parents, spouses, children um, on project protected profiles 
and they can also use GEDCOMs to, um, or GEDCOMs, however you want to say it, to edit project protected <laughs> profiles. Okay, cool. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, are team leaders. So team leaders are kind of a new development in the project space. It's only been around for a couple of years. Um, and these team leaders will help lead specific project teams and help coordinate members on those teams, right? So they don't have any special um, abilities on Wikitree, but they do play a vital role in helping their projects. So they're working with the project leaders and the coordinators, you know, on a weekly or daily basis to formulate what the goals are for their teams and send out tasks mm -hmm. to help drive their team towards meeting those goals. Um, and they also help to identify like future team leaders as an example, mm -hmm. that may be able to mm -hmm. step up, you know, and help out. So again, when we talk about leadership, we're talking about really all of those kind of members of a project, the leaders, the coordinators, and the team leaders all together form the leadership team. They're all kind of responsible yeah. for specific actions and areas within that project. Gotcha. And, and they're all critical roles because they all do a little something different. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially yeah. when you start getting into some of the larger, larger projects that have hundreds of members, right. you know, if you have a project that may only have two leaders, it's hard for two people to, you know, really help a project that has hundreds and hundreds of members. So by having project coordinators and team leaders, you're able to divide your main group, your project into smaller projects where everybody mm -hmm. can communicate with each other. Well, that kind of goes along with the question Liz just asked. She said, when are the groups that fit under a top project considered sub-projects, and when would they be termed a team? So what would so, be the difference between a team and a sub-project? Right. So there is a little bit of flexibility um, between teams and sub-projects. So teams are generally kind of smaller in nature. Maybe I, I don't want to throw out any hard numbers. Um but let's just say, you know, 10 to 15 members who are working on a specific type of task. A sub project is going to be a little more formal than that. They're going to have a little more formal structure and the sub project may have their own teams as well. But when we start getting into the sub project level, that's when they're going to have an actual page in the project namespace. They're going to have coordinators and leaders who are trying to help drive that project forward in addition to any 10 leaders that they may have. And some, some projects, like we said, depending on how they're growing, how they're managing profiles, um, they may also now have their own project account and project badge. So, again, it's just depending on how much the project go, grows. And it's really kind of up to the discretion of the projects. And that's something that I can help assist them with, you know, as if so, we expand. So a sub project would be focused around a particular topic, whereas a team is probably more focused around a task that helps the sub project or the top level project accomplish something. Is that right? Can you give an example of what a team would do? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I, three main examples. So there's quite a few projects that will have like a membership or onboarding team. And those mm -hmm. are people who are specifically focused on helping new members to the project, get acquainted with everything that's going on, learn about the goals, okay. learn about the tasks, maybe help get them situated into the Google groups or maybe the Discord server so they can do live chats, um, help them with moving through an orphan trail as an example, like uh, the England project does. Other teams mm -hmm. may be focused on a specific activity such as the database suggestions, making sure that mm -hmm. all profiles are um, clean and free of errors or that any suggestions on those profiles have been taken care of while other teams okay. may be focused on to a specific um, topic like the notables of whatever okay and I think I'm aware of um, shoot I can't remember which team which uh, project does this but they have like a or maybe a number of them do have like a managed profiles team yeah, so absolutely. they keep they keep their eye on any correspondence or questions that come in about projects or profiles that the project manages. Absolutely. So, so um, that would be another. Example. I'm pretty sure, you know, we're talking about some of our larger projects like 
England, Scotland, mm -hmm. Canada, that they, I believe they all have managed profile teams. Yeah. Alesh asked a question here about um, okay. can teams belong to two projects like data doctors in England? And I think, I, I mean, it's, I think there's like some crossover there where data doctors is functional. England is a subject, but England might have a team that works as data doctors on England projects. Is that right? Um, real, realistically, how it works is not all members of let's say a England data doctors team have to be actual data doctor project members. Um, mm -hmm. Their focus is more um scoped in nature right so they're only working on england, uh, england profiles however there should be you know some collaboration and coordination between the team and the data doctors project right, right. so information can be passed around if there's new suggestions that are out you know they'll probably want to follow the data doctors tag so they get that information as it's posted to help keep them up okay. to date so it's not really that they're um, belonging to two different top level projects, but there's a lot of interface and collaboration and communication that will be going on at those. Yeah. Levels. I guess the way I look at that is that the data doctors kind of support the projects in that they're helping to, you know, Alesh organizes the, the suggestions for us and makes, makes the different projects aware of what needs to be corrected or worked on or. Right. Right. Whatever. So it's kind of a support role by the data doctors in a way. Absolutely. So if we want to, if somebody wanted to join the leadership of a project, how would they do that? And, and how do you become a project leader? Who, who decides okay. that? Um, so right now the um, project leaders are nominated from among the superstars of the community. Those are the ones that have the superstar badge. Um, and that's a badge that's awarded by other leaders. Um, but having that superstar badge is, you know, only a small first step of the process. So in order to become a project leader, um, it, it's typically going to be a member who's already showing leadership in one or more projects. You know, maybe they're serving as a project coordinator. Um, they're working as a ranger or mentor, you know, trying to help the community already. Um, you know, it's not something that you can just volunteer for um, in the sense of I want to be a project leader, sign me up and, you know, I want my badge. It, it's more of a be active in your projects, right? Be a voice. Well, Don't be afraid to step up and reach out to assist the leaders when they're when they need it, you know, kind of help with those leadership tasks. And, you know, you'll you'll start to get right. that recognition. And if you want to, if it's something that you're interested in you know, working towards talk to the, the project leader that you're working with and say, you know, what do I need to do to Absolutely. reach that level of expertise? Absolutely. If you're already in a project, reach out to your project leaders, reach out to your project coordinators, um, mm -hmm. ask them what they can do to assist, how, how they can work on becoming them, or you, you can reach out to me as well. You mm -hmm. know, and I just some general pointers to help you kind of get through the process. You know, the, the one thing right. to kind of think of is you can be a great contributor to a project um, or to Wikitree in general. You know, you're great at research, you're great at working on profiles, you have expertise in a lot of areas. But if you're kind of silent and hiding in the background, you're not communicating with people in G2G and offering your assistance, you're not, you know, fully participating in the projects, you know, you could be unintentionally overlooked right it, it's definitely not intentional but with hundreds of members in a project just remember that you know those who kind of stand up will stand out sure so there's uh, different you were talking about different types of leaders there's the project leaders how do you become a project coordinator for example so or a team leader yep so kind of how we talked about projects earlier where we have kind of more formal and less formal project coordinators are kind of a less formal role on Wikitree. So these are the members that, again, also help to lead the projects without the formal project leader status, permissions, ongoing requirements. Um, they're helping to coordinate members of the specific project they're working with who want to work together on the same tasks. Um, you know, they act as the driving force behind the project itself. 
and they are chosen by their project leaders for those projects. So for example, in the Canada project, those project leaders are, you know, grabbing those outstanding members of their project and moving them up to a project coordinator level, giving them some tasks that they can do and monitor on a daily basis. Um, they have a little more responsibility too. Right. Absolutely. And if you're on a project that maybe doesn't have a lot of project coordinators, or you see that there's a lot of requests for help, reach out to a leader, you know, tell them you're, you're willing, you're volunteering to help, um, or your leader may approach you again, just based on your work within the project. Um, so there's no formal nominations or review process or anything like that. There is with the leaders. It's if a project leader wants you as their project coordinator, you're in good standing with the community, then they can award you that badge. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's, it's, uh, it's extra responsibility, but it's also very satisfying to be able to participate like that. Yep, absolutely. Ah, and now what about question? Oh, yes, she does. Can project coordinators award badges? <laughs> Not yet. Um, so we do have some <laughs> kind of in the works. We do have something kind of in the works for it. I won't uh, share too many details just yet, but it's something we're working on. Um, you know, when you're working on a project that only has two leaders and you have project coordinators or team leaders who are helping to monitor GDG and onboard new members, it becomes kind of troublesome to have to pass around you know, members to different phases or different levels within the project up to a leader to go award a badge. So again, I won't share too many details, but it is something we're looking into and hopefully we'll have available. <laughs> well, Tara has another really good question that kind of leads into my next question. She wants to create a free space page to coordinate family research on some of the family's ancestors. Can you give us an example of some kind of project that would be similar to that, that could help her kind of get that focused and organized. Now you're going to make me find one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start with like, you know, if you're working on a family, if you're working on like a surname, you know, maybe then a good place would be to start with, with the one name studies product project. Um, so while one name studies are more globally focused on every occurrence of that surname, even if they're not related to each other, um there's kind of those teams and free space projects underneath a one name study that you can do that center around centers around a specific family um and then i'm gonna head over to should i do a little dance while you're looking keep everybody yeah, entertained i've got to get <laughs> over to category like a little awkward silence to help things out yeah. The, the one name studies, Tara, might be something that you're interested in looking into. If you're looking at particular ancestor, it might help you to trace that particular ancestor's paternal line. Right. So that, that could be a way to get started. Absolutely. So I am ready. Let me get over to share my screen. Okay. So from the Wikitree homepage, if we go to find categories and we're going to land on the main categories page, we have a large or a rather large category grouping family topics. So you'll see a lot of a kind of bigger. examples in here that cover a range of different scopes, right? So things focusing on like family heirlooms, given names, um, controversial pedigrees, big families, and again, one name studies and one place studies kind of fall under that. So this is a good resource to kind of look around and see what other members are doing. Um, I don't have a specific page that I can show you right off of the bat. I'd have to dig through a couple of them. Um, but this is a good place to really look. See how others well, are and if, working them. Right. And even the structure of the one name studies might be useful for her. Could we could we take a look at one of those oh, yeah, maybe absolutely. and see just kind of give her an idea of what what people are putting on the page to help? So let me just go to the one name studies itself. I'll put us back over here. <laughs> oh, these are the stickers. Where are So 
So again, a lot of this is going to be specific to the one name studies it's, itself, but this will help you kind of drive your pages here. But um, looking at your main page, how, how you're going to break it down into sections. So give some information mm -hmm. about the project, what you're trying to do, define your goal, right? Um, even if just for yourself, if you're going to be the only person working on it, provide your goal. Um, you know, maybe allow other people to join you if they're if they're willing to um, create research pages. These research pages are where all of the day to day operations are going to happen. Um, so this could be a specific family unit that you're working on that you can later group together, etc. Um, and then just do your research, collect your data, analyze it, put put it all in one place. You know where you can start making those connections and if you're working on a particular ancestor Tara this this could be helpful to give you some guidance on setting up your research um, you might want to include something like a timeline for their life um, different connections in different locations that they've lived and and then we get into the one place studies <laughs> which can help you focus on you know the the parts of that family that ended up in one location and who else they they were connected to in that location and there's a lot of different ideas and I'm sure you could get some help with with from other people who've done similar things if you ask that question out in G2G right absolutely yeah so final question Steve mm -hmm. that that kind of covered a little bit of this but not entirely how do I start a project if I want to start something, what do I do? Okay. Um, my recommendation is just number one, start at the free space level, right? We have a page that'll kind of help you walk you through some questions on, you know, do you want to start it now or can you wait or does it fit within another project? My advice is go ahead and get it started. At least get something documented um, so others can help you and see where it may fit in. So, from WikiTree, we have our find, or excuse me, our add menu. We're going to do add new project. So this will take you to a form that you can fill out. It's very similar to creating a free space page, and this will create a free space page for you. Um, but it kind of gives you an outline that you can follow. Name your project, um, add a tag that may be relevant, um, and then you know, provide a description of the project. What is your goal? What are the tasks? What, what are you trying to do? How can people communicate with you? Again, you'll see that when this project is being created, that it's automatically going to be added to the category new projects. Um, that's something that I'll be monitoring with. Um, again, I reach out to leaders when I see these pop up and see, you know, this is very similar to what you may already be working on or, hey, this looks like it'll fit within the England project, for example. And I'll reach out to those, that leadership team and let them know about these new free space projects so they can start collaborating with that member. Now, obviously, if it doesn't fall within any of that, um, a great example of one is the Classic Disney project, right? Mm -hmm. So the Classic Disney project was started. It's a simple free space page. Um, it's gained a lot of traction. They've made a lot of good progress. And we were able to put that underneath the Notables project again just where it logically fits and there's a lot of great work going on in that in that classic disney project is still right now just a free space page right they use the free space page to do all of their documentation they're using g to g to provide updates and you know attract new members and things of that nature so yep that was a cool idea oh absolutely um, Min mindy asked if there's a category for one place studies and i'm going to say yes there is yep. <laughs> Um, we did cover a lot of that in our One Place Studies um, live cast a couple weeks ago. So mm -hmm. if you guys are interested, it's in our YouTube feed. Right. So I just went to find categories to get on our main uh, category navigation here. And under family, we have One Place Studies. And this. And I think that's a complete that answers. Um, sorry to interrupt. That answers Liz's question about the family topics category. That's where you just were. Could you back up once and, and show oh, her exactly yep. how you got there? It is on the main category listing. So at category categories, um, or again, by doing find 
categories will take you to this page and family. Okay. And again, this will have a lot of topics underneath it, uh, things to review. So if you're working on one of these family type projects we were talking about earlier is it may not be exactly the same. It may be very similar to what others are doing. Again, just to give you an idea of how they're going through it. Um, there's even a category for family projects that you could at least put it in to get started. So you see here, there's one for looks like the Whittall family or the Heinz family project. And it's a category mm -hmm. where they're grouping all of their pages and information together. So it's all in one place. Great. It's very cool. So does anybody, if anybody else has any more questions, chime in and we'll, we'll get to those before we lose Steve. Yeah. Do you have anything else, Steve, that you'd like to share with us about projects? Anything I mean, popped into your head while we were chatting here? Not yet. I mean, you know, projects and leadership is something that we could really talk for hours and hours and hours about. Um, <clears throat> you know, so maybe in the future we can do another live cast and go a little deeper into some of these topics. Mm -hmm. You know, or if we have a bunch good, of questions coming up in G2G. So if you've seen the G2G post about today's live cast, feel free to go there. If you have any additional questions, I will keep my eye on that. Aon will keep her eye on it. And we'll jump in and answer questions and possibly, again, do another live cast and dive a little deeper into some of these topics. Yeah, good plan. I did notice um, Denise a while back mentioned something about Discord, and I don't think we covered that, but most of our projects have a channel on our Discord server and it's just an informal way for project members to communicate with each other live. So um, it's not like video live unless you want it to be. But right. we all talk, use text chat to get out there. You might be able to ask a quick question of your project leader. Where do I find this? Or I'm stuck here. Yep. But it's not a place where we settle policy or anything. It's just for quick help. Right, right. And so yeah, anything that has to do with, you know, policy discussions, things of that nature that's always going to be in g to g right that's really the right. heart of our community is in g to g um discord and you know even the google groups that just gives you another way to be able to collaborate with others the people that you yeah. are specifically tied to um so we do have a wiki tree discord server um, that is the main server and each of the projects will have a channel um, there's a couple of bots that we have running in there that do various things such as automatically assigning you know, permissions to see different channels and things of that nature. And how would we find out how to get there, Steve? How would we get to the Discord server to get to get All connected right. there? So let's see. I don't think we've added it here yet. I know the answer. I'm just being coy. Yep. So well, I'm <laughs> I'm navigating around, but it's always going to be through help pages, um, yes. through our help categories. But here we are. So once again, we're going to go to help, help. And that lands us on the main category for Wikitree help. And if we just scroll down, we have an entry specifically for Discord. And on this page, you will find a lot of the information you're looking for. You know, what is it? Why are we using it? <laughs> Why is it called Discord? Right, and then how to start. <laughs> which was not our choice. Right, definitely we did not, not name choice. it. It's a, yeah, it's a third party piece of software. Yep, and, very popular you know, with as, gaming as people. Page, you know, one of the founders just said it sounds cool. Yeah, right? so there was exactly. no real rhyme or reason to it. Uh, but no. there's a link directly to the WikiTree Discord server. When you click on that, you can sign up for an account. We do have a little bit of a registration process. We just ask that you know users change their name to include their wiki tree id so that we can validate them um, that keeps all the spammers and all that sorts of stuff out of those um, channels yep so and once you get there it takes a look at your profile when you give it your profile id and it mm -hmm. goes out and it we have a little bot that goes out and looks at your profile and says oh they belong to this this and this project so then you're assigned those roles and you'll be able to go in those channels and chat with the other project members right that's another one of uh Alesha's babies, right? You know, he's <laughs> great at all the technical side of everything. 
Um, so he's got that all set up for us. We, we don't have to go in and individually apply roles to people. Um, the bot automatically, like Julie said, looks at your profile, retrieves, you know, like your badge information and adds you automatically to all the channels. Yep. Now, while we were talking, Steve, we had a really good question come up. What happens when a project becomes inactive? That that's a fun one. So <laughs> <laughs> it is what we like to call, you know, kind of an inactive project is, is basically dormant. Um, that's where they don't have any anybody on the leadership team. Um, there's no real members that are working on the project itself. In those cases, all of the information stays there. Um, you know, it stays categorized. It's just not something that's advertised in G2G or, you know, not in the newsletter. There, there's nothing really going on with them. Um, but again, in a lot of cases, even if a project that is a top level project or um, a sub project, you know, even though there's not two project leaders or maybe there's no project leaders currently, as long as we have people on the leadership team, then the project will never really go inactive or, or go dormant, as we call them. As long as we have some type of leadership there who is able to help the members and that they're members who are willing to help the goals of the project. Right. And we have a finite number of project leaders. So we might have a project that that initially had a lot of interest um, and maybe the project leaders that were leading it had to step away from WikiTree for a period of time. It, it happens, right. you know, life takes over sometimes. And so sometimes the the project will go leaderless. But if we've got still got project coordinators around, they can help to lead some of the aspects of the project and we'll have other people, you know, step in to help when necessary. If I mean, like right now, our project coordinators can't give badges. But if we have somebody that wants to join, for example, I, I can't think of a dormant project right now. Switzerland is Switzerland act? No, they're active, right? Yep. I'm I'm not. I can't think of one right now, but yeah, they, I mean, there there may be a couple of those again that are leaderless. One one thing to remember is that we're all volunteers here, right? right. So they're volunteering their time in that capacity. Um, yep, right. I sure got it right. Everybody on WikiTree really is a volunteer. They're volunteering their time, and things do happen. You know they need to step down, they'd like to go emeritus, they may come back later, um, or they may just not be able to devote time to a project if they're leading multiple projects. And you will see that they will right. have leaders that are trying to help lead three or four projects at a time. And, and, and again, it's, it's a big toll on volunteers. Um, well, that's and that's, that's why we asked for people to start projects small with a free space project, right? Absolutely. Because it, and as it gathers interest, then it might blossom into a bigger project right it'll blossom into a bigger project well not only that like i said and if we can also logically put those smaller projects underneath another project then those leaders can assist with those tasks as well and right. the hope that they yeah. need but for any of the projects that may be leaderless at this time and they're still active members they're still project coordinators you know, I'm another point of contact. Feel free to reach out to me. If you're needing to onboard new members, you'd like to give them a badge, but there's no leader available, shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to go in and help you with any of that. I can answer any questions for you. Um, another thing that we've kind of seen in G2G is, you know, well, can you assign a leader to my project? Right. And again, going back to our leaders are volunteers. Um, the, the, <laughs> the one thing we don't want to do is force anyone into a project that they're not going to be happy with. They're not going to be able to give it their full attention. They're not going to give it everything that it deserves. So when or they might not be comfortable with the topic. So right. They may not be knowledgeable in the area and things of that nature. Um, I could never serve as a leader of the England project or the Canada project. I'd, it's just way out of my wheelhouse, right? Um, so I, I stick to the things that I'm good with. I can learn a lot from the Eng England project if I was to become a member. Um, but being able to lead that project is completely different. And you'll see that a lot yeah. as well. Project leaders who are leading one project and they're just a member of another project. You know, so even though it is a global scoped role and they have certain responsibilities and abilities that they can do, just being a project leader alone doesn't make them 
you know, the master of everything, you know? Right. Well, and if we don't have leaders for a project, you know, it doesn't prevent the people who are interested in that topic from collaborating together. Right. Absolutely. And, and ultimately if you need for it to become more formalized, you know, work with, work with Steve, he'll, he'll help you find a way. So uh, Mindy had asked what the ratio of project leaders to members are. And if I remember right, we try to have one leader for, is it every thousand Thousand. members? I'm not sure we're there. It's just not that easy to find it. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I know. And she has to, you know, follow up with that as well. Is there a limit to the number of leaders? Um, Not really. Right. Oh. And again, since it is a volunteer position, there's been a lot of, you know, members who have been nominated. Hey, you've been nominated, become a project member. Would you be willing to help step up? And some of them are like, you know, I, I do this as a hobby. I, I really don't want to go beyond that. And I would like to just stay a member. I'll help you in whatever right. way that I can, but right. I, I'd rather not be a project leader. Um, it is a responsibility. It's a lot. It, it's more than just being a standard member. I mean, you have to you have to be part of the functional projects because our leaders help keep keep the uh, the website running. Right. And now Chris kind of brings up a good point here. He said that um, I myself was kind of the leader of the Italy project uh, before Azure took over um, and when assisted with that. And basically what I did is I knew the Italy project needed help um, and I had the time and resources available to help them. So I just kind of stepped in and filled that role um, until, you know, another leader became available to really devote their attention to that project. So I wasn't help drive changes or anything, but I was there to assist with the day-to-day operations. Sure. um, Some of the admin stuff. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. The the admin stuff that I had access to that not everybody else did. Right. Right. All right. Well, this has been really great. I don't know. I don't, if you guys have more questions, like Steve said, pop out to the G2G post for this video and uh, ask it out there. They'll, they'll keep an eye on it because we yeah, absolutely. we're about, about to the end of our allotted time here. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. You guys had great questions. I hope you all feel better informed. And hopefully we'll be back in another couple of weeks or so with another really fascinating video of topics about WikiTree. <laughs> so thanks for coming you guys we'll see you soon all right bye bye oh hang on i clicked the wrong button